not checking the blind spot. A lot of people do not check the blind spot due to nervousness or uh, they sometimes just rely on the mirrors. What if the car in front of you suddenly breaks? If you do not have enough room, let's say you're trying to make a right turn and there's a car coming from the left hand side uh, and you don't yield to it. Hello everyone, this is Emin Dasuri and in this video I'm going to tell you about 9 reasons for an auto fail on a road test. The number one reason is a rolling stop. I put it on number one on purpose because this is why I failed my G-test. So a rolling stop means you do not come to a full stop. That means your wheels are not getting locked. Just like in this video. This guy didn't stop fully. So the way to stop fully would be to lock your wheels and feel a bit of a jolt. You know, a lot of people try to avoid that jolt thinking that the examiner may not like it. Uh, but let me tell you this, a jolt is actually good. It confirms that you have come to a full stop. Uh, if it is a big jolt like this, then uh, that is something you should be concerned about. But, you know, a slight jolt is something that you want to look for because that way they know that you've come to a full stop. The other way to tell that you've stopped fully is to count one, two, three in your head. So after you put, press the brake, not when you start pressing the brake, after the car comes to a stop, you want to count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and then go. Don't go too slow. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. What's going to happen is someone's going to honk from behind you and you're going to fail because of that. That's another reason for an auto fail. So make sure you, you do it fast. Okay. 1,001, 1,002, and 1,003. That's that. And you go. Number two reason is speed. You know, either you're driving too fast or you're driving too slow. A lot of times, Driving too slow happens in residential streets where there is no speed sign posted. You know, because people are driving in residential streets, they think that they have to be really cautious and uh, drive very slow. But the fact is that the examiners want you to follow the, the rules, which says that, you know, if there's no speed sign posted, you're supposed to drive at 50 versus 40. So what I would do is if I'm confused, I would I would as soon as I enter a side street or a residential street, I would I would say to the examiner, oh, I do not see a speed sign here. So I'm supposed to drive at 50. I'll keep it at 50. When you're talking aloud, that way the examiner knows what you know. They know that you know your stuff. And if they want you to go slower than that, you know, they will let you know. And then th that way you're, you're playing safe. You know, sometimes it helps to talk. A lot of my students have used this strategy and they passed with flying colors. So you can also use that, you know, talk, talk and let them know that you know uh, what, is, uh, what is expected on the road test or you know the road rules. Driving too fast mostly happens on the highways or when you're try trying to switch lanes. When trying to switch lanes, you have to focus on a lot of things. Look behind you, check your blind spot, check, uh, the, check for the car in front of you, the speed of the car in front of you, and then check the speed, all those things. And that, what happens is some people end up accelerating too fast, go over the speed limit for more than, uh, you know, 15 to 20 seconds. And if that happens on the test, that's a fail. So that is why I always used to tell my students to keep an eye on uh, the speedometer. So what you want to do is when switching lanes, you want to look, you, you want to start by looking at the speed. You want to make sure that you're up to the speed of the traffic or the, the whatever the sign says. And you look before you switch lanes and after you switch lanes, immediately you want to go back and check your speed so that you can maintain it. Maintain it. Sometimes you would go over the speed limit when switching lanes and it's okay to do that, but you want to bring it back as quickly as possible. As long as you do that, you're safe. Reason number three is unsafe lane changes. And there are many ways in which people do this. Number one is not signaling when you're switching lanes. You know, it is very important to let the cars behind you know what your intentions are so that, you know, they can decide their course of action based on that. Either, you know, they will speed up and go in front of you or they will slow down and let you switch lanes in front of them. 
So it is very important to signal. Number two is not checking the blind spot. A lot of people do not check the blind spot due to nervousness or uh, they sometimes just rely on the mirrors and uh, they think that they see everything, but actually they do not. And that, that is why they end up making that mistake. You know, if you switch lanes in front of a car, uh, then you can crash into it. Number three is switching too close. You know, you have to make sure that there is enough space in front of you before you switch lanes. You know, why I say that is because what if the car in front of you suddenly breaks? If you do not have enough room, you're going to crash into the car. So it is very important for us to leave enough room so that we can we can leave some space for emergency braking. Hey, if you're new to this channel, then make sure you check out other videos in the video section of this channel and also check out the playlists for different types of videos. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Reason number four is dangerous action. Now, there can be a lot of dangerous actions. Uh, one of them is unsafe lane change, obviously. And uh, the other type would be not yielding to a car or a pedestrian. Let's say you're trying to make a right turn and there's a car coming from the left-hand side uh, and you don't yield to it. You make a right turn in front of it. So that's dangerous. Number two would be making a left turn and not yielding to the car to the car that is coming from in front of you right so you have to make sure that you yield to the cars and pedestrian pedestrians yes a lot of people sometimes do not want to wait for pedestrians they just turn in front of the pedestrians just like in this situation so you have to be mindful of these things another reason i forgot to mention which is why uh you know a, a lot of my students have failed so this mostly happens with, with the new drivers who are taking their G2 test. You know, when there are cars parked on the side streets, they go too close to the car. You know, if you're driving too close to the car, you're not leaving enough room for this car to open their door. What if there is someone sitting in the parked car? Uh, it could be a kid. They could suddenly open the door. And when they open the door, they're going to hit your car right or something could happen to them right uh like uh if you're driving too close you can run into them so you have to be really uh, mindful of that fact and you want to leave some room and uh do not be worried about the yellow line if there's a yellow line on that side and you have to go over the yellow line it's okay safety before the the, the law or the rule okay so so you go over the yellow line and uh leave enough room for the for the car to open the door, okay? So that's the way you want to go. Now, the next reason is use of cell phones. Now, you might be wondering, whoever does that? Who uses a cell phone during a road test? Well, you'd be surprised to know that two of my students have failed because of use of cell phone during their road test. One student failed because they forgot to put that on silent mode. There's, their phone started ringing, they took it out of the phone and, uh, and tried to cancel it. So you're not supposed to touch your phone during the test. So that was one. Number two was this guy did that out of habit. So this guy was uh, going for his G test. He was uh, driving on a G2 for about two to three years and he had developed the habit of checking his cell phone uh, when waiting at, at the lights. So he did exactly that. So when they stopped at the lights, he, he, he took out his phone and started checking. And the examiner said, like, what are you trying to do? So that was something he was also very disappointed about. He said, you know what? I just did that out of habit. I didn't want to actually check my phone. So if you are in the habit of doing that, you know, I would recommend not carrying your phone with you during the road test. So that's the best way to avoid these two situations. The sixth reason is parking. If you don't get your forward parking, reverse parking, or parallel parking right, then you could fail the test immediately. This is one of the most common reasons for failing the road test, and that is why parking videos are, are some of the most popular driving videos on YouTube. So make sure you practice parking a lot before you go for your driving test. If you haven't checked out some of my videos, then make sure you check them. I'm going to put the link here or here somewhere uh, for you to check out parking videos. Now, the seventh reason is intervention by the driving examiner. If your driving examiner has to reach out to your steering wheel or they have to press the brake on you, that means they're feeling unsafe with you. And that is why it is an auto fail on the test. 
Now, this has happened only once during the entire course of my career as a driving instructor. So I, this was this was at Guelph. So this person has had gone for a G test, and uh, in the middle of the test, we, I, I get a call from my student saying, "You know what? You'll have to come." Uh, get me from here. My driving examiner says that she's not feeling safe. She has called the the drive test center to to escort her to take her back to the drive test center. So you'll have to make an arrangement to to get me from here because I can't drive the car now. So before you go for your drive test, make sure that you know you're 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 driving really well and no one sitting beside you feels unsafe with you, whether it's your driving instructor or whether it's your friend or relative, they should feel very safe with you when you're driving. The eighth reason is a tricky reason, which is running a yellow light. Now, a lot of my students have failed because of running a yellow and uh, most of them were not happy uh, because of that. They said that the examiner was being unfair. So here's my advice to you. When you go through a yellow, I'm sure you 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 would do that because of some reason, maybe because you're not able to make that stop. And that is why you would go through that yellow. So if you have to go through the yellow, make sure you let the examiner know immediately after running the yellow that, you know, hey, I couldn't stop at that yellow. Or what I would recommend you do is you start braking a little bit. As soon as you see the yellow, you start tapping the brake a little bit and see if you're able to stop. And if you can't stop, uh, you have to go through the yellow, tell the examiner, hey, I'm trying to stop, but looks like I'll have to go through the yellow. That way the examiner will know that you did that uh, very consciously. You know, some examiners, I shouldn't say this, but this, uh, and this happens a lot. These examiners, they will take advantage of the situation and fail you uh, if for some reason they do not like the way you're driving. So do not give them a chance to fail you when you go through a yellow. If you, if you tell them why you did that, then that will reduce your chances for a fail. The ninth reason is hitting the curb. Now this happens when you're trying to do parallel parking. Most of the times when you're trying to do a parallel parking and sometimes when you're doing a three point turn. I'm going to make a video on how to do a nice and safe three point turn. And uh, on parallel parking, I already have videos. So make sure you watch them. So, you know, it, it's, it's very tricky again, because sometimes some some of my students, uh, they would come back and say, you know what, Herminder, I hit the curb, by, but my examiner was so nice, they still let me uh, retry it. And, uh, you know, sometimes you would get such nice examiners, but most of the times, uh, you know, they, the examiners will go by the books and uh, they will fail you as soon as you hit the curb. Uh, they will they'll just, just fail you right away. Make sure you use the blind spot mirrors that allow you to see the ground, right? Uh, I've always used blind spot mirrors and they have worked like wonders. And if you haven't bought them yet, make sure you check out the link in the description box below and buy them. They're cheap, less than 10 bucks. And that, that's they're gonna save you a lot of money, trust me. So that's one way of avoiding hitting a curb. So that's that about auto fails. Let me know if you have ever failed a road test. Why did you fail a road test? Was it one of these nine reasons or what was it outside these uh, nine reasons? I would love to know your experience on a road test so that, you know, other people can benefit from it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again with another video.